that is actually an area where we in some sense meet also geographically uh, Australia and Norway. We are, our claimant areas are actually neighboring each other in the Antarctic as well. But that's to the side because we, they are dormant claims at this stage. And, and that is of course because we've actually had now a very successful international cooperation over many decades within the Antarctic Treaty System. Uh, and also then later on uh, within the co uh, Convention for uh, Protection and uh, Preservation of the Marine Living Resources, Kamalar, uh, whose headquarters are in Tasmania. Uh, and this is an area where I think we share uh, completely uh, the same interest as Australia in maintaining that area as a peaceful area of cooperation and to uh, preserve uh, the very pristine environment uh, in uh, the Antarctic, but also to harvest the, the living resources that are there in a very sustainable matter based on scientific uh, management, of course. I think that uh, the strategic importance of Australia has increased, uh, not just uh, seen from our side, but I think uh, in general, internationally, because of course we've had a sort of power shift uh, moving to, uh, to the east, to the Indo-Pacific or Asia-Pacific region. Um, that, I think, draws the attention uh, of uh, every country in the world uh, because it matters what happens in this world. It matters in particular maybe to global economy, but it matters a lot to the strategic uh, and security uh, policy um, stability in the world. Uh, and obviously, even though we are far away from this region, uh, with the sort of interlinked, interdependent, globalized world that we live in, it means that any kind of instability in this part of the world will have both a direct and indirect consequence uh, for our part of the world as well. Uh, so it means that um, having a cooperation with Australia, uh, as for instance, Australia is an enhanced security partner for NATO, uh, is something that is of value. Uh, also, when it comes to having a situational awareness of what goes on in this part of the world, uh, being able to understand, uh, being able to uh, keep updated and have knowledge about uh, regional <coughs> developments here. And Australia is a very good interlocutor uh, because you have this sort of geographical lo location, obviously. Uh, and then I think that we have obviously also been together, like we have been in Afghanistan, but also the participation that Australia has had now over a number of years in the anti-piracy operations outside of the east coast of Africa, uh, which is also part of the kind of international cooperation uh, against terrorism. Uh, of course, in, in Syria and Iraq, we have been fighting together against ISIL. Uh, so these are, again, very sort of shared security policy concerns. Uh, where there's uh, really no sort of uh, regional delineation. I think, you know, we, we all feel the, uh, the concern for the kind of security threat that international terrorism uh, presents. We all feel uh, the threat of uh, the spread of uh, uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, and obviously uh, we've seen with some concern the developments in this uh, close region as well in that regard. Uh, and those um, issues very much form part of what is our bilateral also cooperation in this area. So that means that we do of course have political consultations and we talk about these uh, issues. We compare sort of our experiences, our assessments and things like that. Uh, but again, the most sort of practical security policy operation that we've had together is in these sort of international military operations. Yeah, we have been represented. Uh, uh, it's, it's a few years back now since the last time, but we have had several ships there on rotation uh, since uh, the beginning of the operation that was led by NATO. And then we've also supported the European Union led operation at the same time. So we have, uh, I'm not sure if we've been there simultaneously uh, with, uh, with Australia, but definitely been part of the same sort of uh, international cooperation. And that has been a very successful cooperation because uh, that kind of problem outside of the coast of Somalia and East Africa mm. has actually more or less been dealt with. At, you should never say that, most likely, but <laughs> it has at least uh, had a very positive development. As I started out by saying uh, to your last question, um, the, the sort of trend that we've seen over the last decades is of course that uh, the economic powerhouses, the uh, emerging in economies uh, and very quickly emerging economies are in the Indo-Pacific area and that means that these 
are increasingly a very important market for Norwegian economy and Norwegian trade as well. Um, we, we have not the same sort of very uh, comprehensive, elaborate relationship uh, with some of these countries that you do. Uh, and obviously also because we are a much smaller country with a smaller economy and we are further away from the market. Uh, but I think there's a very clear ambition in the Norwegian government, the current one, but also previous governments, that we want to uh, keep promoting and developing our, our relationship uh, with India, with uh, China, uh, with this out uh, East Asia countries and ASEAN will become a sector dialogue partner with ASEAN which has been very important for us and, and it's different uh, definitely a clear sign that uh, of our willingness to be a partner for, for this region as well uh, and that we do see that there are opportunities for strengthening that sort of collaboration uh, but um, we, we do not have at this stage free trade agreements uh, with, uh, with any of those uh, countries uh, that might come at a later stage. Uh, but it means that we are still working very hard to, to promote the opportunities uh, that we want to see for, for our Norwegian businesses in, in all, all of this part of this region, basically. Uh, and, and then obviously we, we are, share the same sort of interest and concerns as Australia does when it comes to a rules-based uh, world order. So we, we are definitely uh, clear supporters of having um, uh, an adherence to the, the rules-based order as uh, we've seen through the last century. Uh, we're strong believers in uh, multilateralism and, uh, and th thus we are strong and fairly steadfast supporters of the United Nations, uh, of organizations like uh, we have uh, on, on the trade side, uh, like we, WTO. And, uh, and as a small country with an open economy, we do depend on uh, countries adhering to the rules uh, and that it's not the sort of might of the strong uh, that uh, carries a heavier voice uh, than those of us who, who do not have that. Mm. Well, uh, Norwegian defence industry uh, see, uh, sees Australia as an important and, and interesting market. Uh, and uh, the two major actors uh, that have been active here is uh, Kongsberg Defence uh, and uh, Namo, which is a, a, a company focusing on ammunition. And they have both been working in Australia for two, three decades. Um, they are uh, working either alone or they are working together with uh, partners, uh, European or American partners. And uh, right now, uh, they, uh, Kongsberg is, uh, is going to be part of the Land Forces 19 uh, program uh, together with Reitma. Uh, so, so that is something that is very exciting for them, obviously. Uh, but they see that there are other opportunities in the Australian market as well. And, and Namo has been uh, working closely with the Australian Defence on ammunition uh, and, uh, and will continue to do that also into the future. Uh, there are other uh, Norwegian uh, either part parts of uh, more sort of global uh, companies, uh, but also very small actors uh, who are also looking at the Australian market uh, for niche products, to put it that way. Uh, but um, we don't have those uh, big defense industry actors as uh, some other countries who of course now have uh, been very, very interested in your particular naval program and, uh, and so forth. But uh, Norway and Australia have uh, a fair sort of uh, good uh, cooperation, um, defense cooperation. So not just on the defense industry side, but actually between the defense forces. Uh, obviously because we have uh, taken part in some of the same operations, but also because they uh, have been part of the same sort of procurement programs. We still are with the f uh, 35s for instance, and so forth, which you know makes it uh, quite natural that we collaborate and that we, uh, we try to sort of benefit it in uh, in being partners of the same kind of uh, procurement programs. I think that the relationship between Australia and Norway is very warm, it's very uh, solid, uh, and it goes back a long time. Uh, the fact that it builds on this affinity, it builds on being like-minded in most uh, political um, areas uh, is going to also carry it on into the future. I think that we have ambitions to see if we can develop it further, also uh, with the sort of bilateral angle uh, to it. Uh, ocean and the ocean-related uh, industries, ocean-related challenges, including um, clean oceans, uh, green 
shipping, uh, climate change challenges that we all face, but in particular, obviously, we see in this region and in the South Pacific are mutual concerns that we share. And I do think that we share also a willingness to see how we can contribute and how we can cooperate together. So that, I hope, will be an even bigger part of our relationship into the future. I think that there is still uh, room to improve our trade relations and, and that is something that we hopefully will be able to grow also into the future. And, and then, um, as I started out mentioning, these people-to-people -people contacts, uh, the students that come here and become incredibly good and efficient ambassadors for Australia in Norway when they come back and they can sort of be our linkages, uh, the global alumni, if you will, uh, of Norway or the Australia alumni in Norway. Uh, they will also be part of that bond. And, and I think there's always been also very close uh, sort of minister contacts, for instance, between the foreign ministers, the defense ministers and so forth. They don't necessarily visit each other too often, but they meet in international meetings, and then I do think that they they enjoy sharing um, their analysis and uh, and updating each other on the sort of common activities that we have on a lot of international issues, uh, also in international sort of peace and conflict issues, obviously.